In this week's episode of Zonkyo No Terror, the worst has happened. Lisa has been kidnapped. But what's really great about this episode is we're finally starting to get to learn a little bit about the backstory of some of the characters, in particular 9, 12, and 5. We're starting to learn that they were part of this secret project which was known as the Athena Plan. And all they've really elaborated on is that it was like this secret government project to work with gifted children. That's it. They're still holding back on revealing what was so crazy about this plan and how it's going to tie into Sphinx stealing all of that plutonium. But what's really great about this episode is that Shibazaki is finally off the leash. He is on current suspension and they even go through like the whole like classic cop losing his badge scene where he gets real pissed. He's like, you want my badge number? Here, here's my freaking badge number. The cool thing, though, is now that Shibazaki no longer has to worry about keeping up appearances, he can sort of go outside the boundaries of the law and do exactly what he wants. And he's even got that one rookie from the police force helping him out, and that one would-be hacker. And it looks like they're trying to figure out what's really going on with Sphinx, and how Five is actually planning on manipulating them and sort of like trying to pin everything on them. But the episode actually happens to have a little bit of action and explosions in it as well. What I loved most about this episode is how incredibly tense it was, especially the scene where Lisa finds this box that suddenly arrives out of nowhere, and she should have been a little hesitant at first, because no one should even know that she's there. And when there's a box that says, For Lisa on it, you should probably avoid it like the plague, and it's a good thing she got the hell out of there, because there was a little note on top that let her know it was a bomb, and unfortunately, Sphinx's headquarters has been destroyed, but just like the turtles in Secret of the Ooze, they found a brand new lair, which looks a lot like an old school arcade. They don't get to stay there for too long because Lisa gets really upset because she feels she sort of like ruined all of their plans, and she decides to run away. This leads to an even bigger problem, because Five has these cameras set up all over the place, and she's able to capture her, and it looks like she's going to sort of use her as like a hostage. And she doesn't really seem to care too much about Lisa either. She considers her an aunt and seems to love playing with her and tying her up and putting handcuffs on her. Five is really creepy in this week's episode. I don't think I've ever heard London Bridges Falling Down sung so creepily in my life. Otherwise, great episode right here with a ton of tension, great voice acting, great artwork and animation. But really, that's all I have to say about it. Nothing too complex this week. It's definitely setting up the finale of Zonkyo no Terror, which I think is going to be really great when they finally explain like what the deal is with the Athena plan and there has to be more to it than it's just like gifted children. Is this going to be like some sort of like Akira Institute where there's like psychic kids and they have some sort of crazy power? And obviously they had to have done some really messed up things to both 9 and 12 for them to want to get their revenge. And really, we don't know what their revenge is even about yet. They're still holding off on that. And I think that's one of the most intriguing things about this series, and it's what's keeping me going, is I really want to see what's going to happen and how everything's going to be revealed. And uh, hopefully they don't like leave us with too many questions. I don't know, maybe it'll be one of those series that sort of ends where it's kind of up for interpretation. But from what I've gathered, this is the type of show that seems to be based on facts and things that uh, you know they could give like a nice proper ending to. Uh, otherwise, Five is a fantastic villain. The fact that we've been on break for Zonkyo no Terror for about two weeks now has sort of left me in the ultimate cliffhanger because in the last episode it ended with her playfully playing with uh, Lisa's ID card and you just know that she was going to start doing something to her. And it did not take her long to get captured in this week's episode and obviously this has been hinted at since the beginning of the entire series that once Lisa joined their group that she was probably going to get in a lot of trouble, it probably wouldn't end nicely, and at the very end of the episode, Twelve himself is getting ready to go after her on his bike. So I imagine a really big confrontation is getting ready to go down. I'm not sure if they're going to make it span over the course of the next couple of episodes, or if they're just going to devote like the last couple of them just to an entire backstory about the Athena plan, and how 9, 12, and 5 are at this institute, because... That's really, I think, what's going to make this series great. Otherwise, this was another fantastic episode with incredible production value. Shibazaki is another really great standout character. And damn his friends, now I want to go get some donuts. Those things look delicious. So, great episode. I'm going to give it a 4 out of 5. I cannot wait to see the rest of this series, and I cannot wait to learn what happened during the Athena plan. Check it out, guys. Great stuff. Thank you guys for watching my review today. Before you leave, make sure to hit that like button so you can give this video a thumbs up. And make sure to tell me what you thought about this week's episode of Zonkyo no Terror. 
Do you think 12 is actually going to be able to save Lisa, or do you think it's going to have some explosive results? And make sure to subscribe to the channel if you have not already, that way you can see all of our latest anime and manga reviews, and also make sure to follow us on Facebook and Twitter. And look out this month, because it is Pokemon Month! I'm going to be releasing a ton of Pokemon-themed videos, and I just released my first one. It was the top 10 favorite Pokemon from Generation 1. Make sure to check out a link for that at the very end of the video. Do you like Amazon.com? I know I do. Corey and I now have an Amazon link in our video description box below. And if you go to it and buy anything through Amazon.com, it will support our channel. So bookmark that link, make it happen, and support our channel without having to do a damn thing. Another great way you guys can help support our channel is by donating directly through our PayPal link in the description box below. We recommend $2 a month, although this is completely optional. But the best way to go about this is by sneaking into your mom's room and taking $2. This way, she won't even notice. And we won't have to shake you up for all of your lunch money. So guys, that concludes this review today. Super Kami Guru 9000, out.